to be a very exciting one. For those of you who do follow my channel, um, the one thing that I know as well as Amazon FBA is definitely Facebook ads. Uh, I've been around since the beginning. I definitely remember like when they brought out all their new features, right? When they started doing Instagram, Power Editor and everything, right? So you guys are going to learn from all of my mistakes. We are going to go over every single thing you need to basically master Facebook ads from beginning to end. So sit tight. This is going to be a good one. We are also going to reveal exactly how I turned $262 into over $7,000 profit in one day. So stay tuned till the end. That is going to be a good one. So let's talk about the basics really quick. Um, for those of you who know Facebook ads, you can skip a few minutes ahead if you want, but these are important things that everybody kind of needs to understand so that they can really have the you know infrastructure to build into the more advanced things. So Facebook, you build ad campaigns in three levels. You start at the campaign level, right? This is where you can actually have multiple ad sets and each ad set has multiple ads, right? So a campaign is kind of the highest level. Within the campaigns, you have ad sets, right? Ad sets is where you actually do your detailed targeting. This is where you know you target and say, okay, only show my Facebook ad to somebody who likes Tony Robbins page and also likes, uh, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or, you know, wh whatever you're targeting, whether you're targeting entrepreneurship or maybe you're looking at cats, right? And you're using audience insights, uh, which we will talk about to actually, you know, hone down on get the most targeted audience where you are going to get the most sales, right? And then you have the ad. The ad is kind of the lowest level. It's what the customers on Facebook actually see. This is where you have your copy. You know, you say today only, like get claim your 50% off coupon for this amazing basketball or whatever it is you're selling, right? So those are kind of the three um, overarching tiers of Facebook ads. Let's talk about a little bit of Facebook vocabulary because two people who have never done this before, um, custom audiences, lookalikes, they can be kind of overwhelming, but really when you understand it, it's not that bad. So custom audiences you can make from pretty much anything, right? You can say, you know, make me a custom audience of everyone who's viewed my order page but has not viewed my thank you page. Make me a custom audience of everyone who's visited my website, right? And if you guys aren't familiar with Facebook ads, you're kind of thinking to yourself, how do you know who's visited my website? And that's a great question. And the answer to that is using the Facebook pixel, which we will talk about in just a few minutes. The Facebook pixel is where the magic happens. It allows you to retarget, right? And don't worry if you're confused now, I will explain every single part of that. So custom audiences are incredibly important. You can import an email list, right? So let's say you had 100 people who signed up to your email list, you can create what's called a custom audience from that email list and it'll say, Facebook will say, okay, hey, we have a hundred people in this list and Facebook has an unbelievable amount of data. Let me just repeat that so you guys understand. Unimaginable amount of data. So when you give Facebook someone's email, they're saying, okay, this is this person. We have 200 different data points on this person. Make me a custom audience of everyone who is similar to this person's email, right? And so when you import a customer email file or whatever the case may be, Facebook says, okay, these people share all of these common attributes. Let's make a custom audience of those people, right? And so custom audiences are incredibly important. Um, and we will talk about it more. I just want to kind of introduce it so you guys kind of can get a feel. Lookalike audiences are really where Facebook, Facebook's algorithms and data stores start to shine. So lookalike audiences, you can create, um, you know, let's say you have somebody who likes your page. Let's say you create a Facebook fan page for your amazing, you know, cat jewelry or if you're an entrepreneur and people are liking your own page, right? Once you have enough people who like your page, you can create what's called a lookalike audience of those people who like your page. So let's say I have a thousand people who like my page. You need a hundred at least from a country to create what's called a lookalike audience, but the more people you have, the more accurate Facebook is able to create that audience, right? So let's say I have a hundred people who like my page, all from the USA. So Facebook's gonna look at them and say, okay, 90 of them are males, right? 90 of them are between the ages of 19 and 24. 90 of them, you know, have this amount of money and this amount of education. So they take all of these different data variable points about these people who like your page and they say, hey, okay, well, there's this amount of people in the USA and, you know, they give you 2 million people back who share as many data point attributes as possible with the people who have liked your page. So it's basically a way of Facebook's using their algorithm to bring you the most targeted possible audience based on the data points you give them. So the more people who like your page, the more accurate the lookalike audience is because it's, it's able to match 
match more and more data points and give you a more and more accurate actual lookalike audience. So custom audiences and lookalike audiences are incredibly important. You can actually create lookalike audiences from custom audiences, which is an advanced feature and it's very, very powerful and we definitely are going to talk about that too. So the last Facebook vocabulary that is absolutely necessary to know is what's called the Facebook pixel. So the Facebook pixel, it sounds complicated, but please trust me, it's actually not. Think about the Facebook pixel as an identifier, right? And so have you ever kind of been browsing on the internet and you've seen, you know, let's say you're looking at some uh, camping equipment on like a Shopify website or which is, you know, you just kind of cruising through the cruising through the web and then you come onto Facebook and you've seen an ad for what you were just looking at and you're kind of thinking to yourself, okay, how the heck is that happening? How does Facebook, how could they possibly know that I was just browsing that website? The way that they know is called the Facebook pixel. So it's basically a piece of code that you get from your Facebook ad account that you put you know, in the background of your website and then whenever somebody visits your website, if they are a Facebook user, Facebook will say, hey, you know, Kevin from Oregon visited your website. You know, this is what we know about him, right? So if you want to retarget Kevin on Facebook using Facebook ads, we know that he's visited your website, so why not retarget him? Because, you know, any advertiser who knows anything knows that retargeting is where the magic happens. Retargeting is where you actually start to make the money, right? And so it's not anything fancy, but using Facebook pixels is absolutely pivotal to mastering Facebook ads, so do not ignore it, right? And we will talk about a little bit more of advanced features, which is called um, events, right? So with the Facebook pixel, you have what's called event codes. So let's say that you have a Shopify website or some type of e-commerce website. You'd put event codes on certain pages when you wanted to signify an event occurring. So I know that sounds complicated, but it's not. Just think about it like this. So if somebody visits your website, they're viewing your content, right? No other actions have been taken, so the view content event fires, right? So that, that, that says to the Facebook pixel, hey, this person has viewed content, right? And then you, you also add, right, an add to cart event. So then you know if this person also viewed content, they also add it to cart. So you can start to target people even, even closer, right? And then let's say you have 100 people who fired the purchase event pixel, right? Then all of a sudden you have 100 people who have purchased. And then from those 100 people, you can create a lookalike audience or a conversion campaign, right, targeting people who share similarities and traits with the people who purchased your product. So it starts to get really exciting. I think you guys are probably starting to understand how you can kind of, you know, use this magic and art in a very, you know, thought out eloquent way to retarget people in a very succinct way where you're not wasting money on cold traffic, right? You're retargeting people you know are interested and then you're creating custom and lookalike audiences based on that data. Right, so let's kick it off. So um, this is one of my ad accounts, right? Facebook has the annoying uh, habit of shutting people's ad accounts down um, for basically no reason. So I always create multiple backups. Um, so you'll see a number of different names um, of my accounts, right? Because I have a ton. Uh, and over the years, I've gotten a ton shut down and I've been lucky and thankful to have backups. So one thing I wanna talk about really quick before we get started, I use what's called Business Manager. So Business Manager is basically just um, um, a slightly more advanced version of the Facebook Ads Manager. So that's why you guys are gonna see it like this. Um, it's in my actual, one of my business names. So the Facebook Business Manager is important for a couple of reasons. So if you have multiple Facebook pages, you don't wanna to have to like navigate through you know, 20 different ad account pages. You want them all kind of in one succinct place and you also want to be able to add access. So let's say you wanna hire somebody to help you with Facebook ads or you know, refine your campaigns or build out some new campaigns for you in different countries or whatever the case may be. It's much easier to add somebody in Facebook Business Manager than it is in the normal advert account. So I always recommend anybody who's serious about Facebook ads to kind of sign up for the Business Manager and it's very easy. You just go to business.facebook.com, create account, and I'm not gonna walk you guys through that because you, know, you can do it by yourself. So I am using the Business Manager. And so we're gonna take a look at a number of my different campaigns um, later on, and I'll show you guys exactly kind of how I was targeting things, right? We can talk about how to see, you know, how to look at website purchases, website conversions, you know, and all of these different metrics, right? How to actually organize um, the columns themselves to see, you know, what you're trying to focus on, whether you're trying to, you know, collect emails through leads, whether you're trying to optimize for purchases based on that Facebook event pixel, right? And so it's quite easy once you know or, you know, you've seen somebody set it up before, but I usually just uh, am actually 
you know, optimizing for website purchases or website conversions or, you know, depending on what your campaign is, you can do different things, but knowing how to set up your columns is very important on interpreting the data. So the last thing I want to talk about really quickly before we actually jump into the actual creation of an ad is the audience section, right? So from business manager, you just come over to audiences um, and then all of a sudden you can create all of these different things, custom audiences, lookalike audiences, and now you guys know what a custom audience is and what a lookalike audience is, right? Really quickly, I'll just show you kind of what it looks like. So a custom audience, you can use a customer file to match your customers with people on Facebook and create an audience from the matches, right? So that's what I was talking about before, a customer file. If you do have those email addresses or you, know, you do have address data or phone data, the more data you supply Facebook, the more data points they can match and the more accurate they can actually give you back an audience, right? So you can do it with website traffic as well. Like I was saying, hey, Facebook, make me a custom audience of everyone who's gotten to my order page but has not seen my purchase page, meaning they almost bought but they did not buy because the only way you see the thank you page is when you purchase. And so then you can create a very targeted audience of people who showed a very large amount of interest but then didn't actually purchase for whatever reason. Maybe you know they got a phone call, maybe their dog peed on the carpet, you never really know, right? So don't ever count these people out. Don't think that just because they didn't purchase, they don't want to. Retargeting is where the magic happens, right? So app activity and engagement as well. So these ones I don't use as often, but if you are like an iOS or Android developer, right? Obviously you can use this one. And again, engagement um, is a little bit less powerful. The main two that I use for custom audience are customer file and then uh, website traffic. So really quickly, let's look at a lookalike audience as well. So it asks you for the source, right? So all of the different uh, pages that you actually have on Facebook, you can use there, um, and then the location, right? So if you have, let's say I have 100 people who like my, my Facebook page from the USA. Let's say I have 100 people who like it from Germany. So I could actually choose Germany here from my Kevin David page, and then all of a sudden I have you know this very targeted uh, population to then narrow down further in the German market, right? I could say, hey, Facebook, make me a lookalike audience of everybody who's similar to the Germans who've liked my page and also speak English, right? And then in the audience size here, don't get overwhelmed by this at all. It basically just means, you know, how accurate you want it to be. The most accurate, most targeted with the most data points that match um, is the one out of 10 on audience size. Um, and so you, normally I choose one in the United States because we have enough people there, but let's say you're doing like a lookalike audience based on people who like your product from Japan, right, or like a smaller country, then you'd, you'd need to choose a little bit higher because you, you normally want your audience size on a lookalike audience to be above one million. Like between the one and three million mark is definitely enough. Normally in the USA, if you have a lookalike audience, even on the most accurate on the one, you'll still have that data size. But again, in smaller countries, it sometimes can be a little bit, uh, you need to go a little bit higher. So those are the audience types and let's kick it off. So we are going to create a campaign. All right, guys, so really quickly, I just wanted to mention that this uh, cheat sheet will be available for everyone for free for a while. Um, it will be available for download in the Facebook Ads Ninja Facebook group that I will have as the first link in this description. Um, I do want to keep that community small um, just so we can all kind of like really help each other. But for a limited time, we are going to let everyone join. So if you are interested in Facebook ads or you, know, you do want the cheat sheet, make sure you do join um, our Facebook group. In the description, it will be the first link, Facebook Ads Ninja. You can get access to this cheat sheet, right? I spent, you know, a ton of time writing this out for you guys. So hopefully, um, you know, you will like it. So let's talk about creating a campaign, right? And so this kind of looks complicated if you've never seen it before, but trust me, most of these you will, you know, 99.9% .9 of Facebook advertisers will never actually use. So I've been on Facebook ads for years and years and years now. Um, brand awareness, you know, I've never used that once in my life. Um, reach, again, you know, I've never used it, but I'm sure some people have used it successfully. We are going to focus on the types of campaigns that are actually going to be most applicable to the most number of people. And that is traffic, engagement, and conversions. Right, so really quickly, obviously app installs, it's, you know, if you want people to install your app, 
video views if you want people to view your video if you're trying to make a video viral or you want to bring people into your ecosystem that way video views is interesting because you can actually retarget people based on how much of the video they watched right but it doesn't have to be a video a view audience uh, to do that you can create a traffic campaign where you have you know your advertisement video and then if somebody watched 25 percent you can create a custom audience of people who watch 25 percent you can create a custom audience of people who watch 50 percent you can make a custom audience you guessed it of people who watched 75%, right? So the most important ones we're gonna focus on is traffic, engagement, and conversion. So the life cycle of advertising, in my opinion, right, and what has worked extremely well for me, even when I had, you know, my iOS game that I was advertising, you know, when I was trying to drive traffic to my uh, travel blogs that I was trying to monetize, when I was using Amazon affiliates to try to sell products to earn that affiliate commission, it's always worked for me, um, and it does work extremely well. It's important to understand why, right? So the, the first part of the ad life cycle is engagement. Think about your, when you see an ad yourself on Facebook and what make, gives it instant credibility, right? So social proof is extremely, extremely important when you are advertising on Facebook, when you're selling a product, when you're selling a service. It doesn't matter what it is, people like reviews, right? It's just like Amazon. When you're buying a product on Amazon, you would you rather buy a product that has 100 five-star reviews or zero, right? So engagement is incredibly important. You want your ad to have some engagement. You wanna have some likes on your ad. You wanna have people commenting on it. You wanna have people sharing it, right? When you see an advertisement pop up on Facebook, one that has no interaction at all, and one that has you know 100 likes, some people laughing on the comments, right? Maybe like a couple shares and things like that it instantly says, okay, these people are interested about this ad, so maybe I should be interested as well. So engagement is incre incredibly important. So we will talk about how to get very cheap engagement because it's not, it's not necessarily, you don't need people from the USA to like and comment, right? Because USA, getting people to like and comment is much more expensive than using third world countries. So I'll talk about the strategy I use to use third world countries to actually build up the likes and comments and engagement of an ad and then run that ad in the USA where you're more likely to actually get sales if you're from here, right, or the UK or wherever you're from. Um, so we get cheap, very cheap engagement using third world countries, which we will talk about. And then once we have that engagement, we rerun that same ad in the United States market. Now that it has that social proof, then we can start to get, you know, much higher conversions. So after we get some social proof, traffic is where you can actually, you know, traffic is the most general, most broad, most widely used um, type of campaign on Facebook. You can do anything here. You can drive somebody to a Facebook page and Instagram. You can drive them to your Shopify website. You can drive them to an Amazon listing. It, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, right? A landing page to collect emails. It does not matter what it is, but um, it's the most common and it is basically what you want to use, you know, if you're targeting cold traffic. So in my opinion, if you're doing your targeting correctly, it'll never be cold traffic, but it'll be, you know, lukewarm traffic. But traffic is your first line of defense after you've built some engagement. Once you've kind of gotten people into your ecosystem, once you have people visiting your website, you know, visiting any, any part of your website, once you have people visiting your you know, add to cart page, your order page, once you have people actually making purchases, then you can use what's called a conversion campaign. So you tell Facebook, okay, I wanna optimize this campaign based on all of your data you have as Facebook. I wanna optimize this specific ad campaign to convert for X, right? So let's say you want to create a conversion campaign for people who view your website. You could do that. You want to make a conversion campaign for people who add to cart. You can do that. Facebook will say, okay, these people are more likely to add a product to cart than, you know, anyone else. People will say, Facebook will say, okay, if I want to make a conversion campaign for people who purchase my product, Facebook will say, okay, this person purchased your product. We have all these data points on this person who actually purchased your product. Let's use all of the troves of data that we have on everyone else to match up all of those data points to bring you an audience that is most likely to also purchase your product, right? So it's incredibly important. Um, conversion campaign is definitely the most advanced, but also probably the most important as you build more and more pixel data on more and more people who come to your, you know, into your ecosystem, conversion campaigns become more and more profitable, right? And so the last one I want to mention really quickly is lead generation. So this is kind of a new one. Um, it, it came about pretty recently, but it is incredibly important, right? So one of the things I always preach, if you guys are, you know, tuning into the channel, if this is your first time, welcome to the Ninja Fam. But one of the things I always preach is the importance of email lists, right? So 
If you can build a following, it's the most important thing you can possibly do to create you know, a sustainable business, a long-term business. Right? So you always, always, always want to stress the importance of building an email list, right? Building a Facebook group, you know, everything I'm doing, I'm trying to be, you know, strategic, right? We want to build our Facebook ads, uh, you know, ninja group to help as many people as we can, but also, you know, to build kind of a following that we can communicate with back and forth, right? So it's very important to build an email list. The lead generation campaign is a very cool new way that Facebook kind of gives you a template to collect, you know, email addresses or, you know, drive more sales leads or whatever the case may be. But I've used it as a contest platform, right? Where I'll say, hey, you know, I only have a thousand of these PPC cheat sheet giveaways for my Amazon FBA business, right? And it'll actually display in that that ad itself that people see on their uh, desktop feeds, you know, only a thousand left and it'll actually update in real time. And that gives a little bit of an element of scarcity. People are saying, oh gosh, there's only 500 left. Like I should probably get mine now. Right. And so you're getting emails for a very cheap price using like an actual in template version that Facebook gives you to collect emails. So we are going to do a traffic campaign. But those are the most important, just to summarize, right? Engagement to build social proof. Traffic kind of drives that, that lukewarm traffic. Once you have people into your ecosystem, the conversion campaign is really what drives it home and optimizes and uses Facebook's incredibly accurate and powerful algorithms to bring you the most likely people to buy your product or service, right? And then last but not least, lead generation to kind of build that uh, email list, right? So let's talk about actually naming a campaign. All right, so you want to be specific here, guys, because I know it doesn't seem like it, but as you get more and more into Facebook ads, you'll start to have tens, hundreds, even thousands of different campaigns, and it starts to get kind of confusing unless you kind of name it right up front. So let's say that we are selling, you know, some products for our micro pig boutique Shopify site, right? And if you guys have never seen a micro pig, you should definitely check them out because they're the cutest things in the world. So we're going to call this a traffic micro pig um, we'll call it nine one, give a little hyphen here, traffic micro pig apparel nine one seventeen. Um, and then we're going to do cold, right? Cause if you want to use a custom audience or a lookalike audience, then you'd want to name it here. So you'd say like, you'd say page likes lookalike audience USA. Right, but we're not going to do that here. We're just going to do cold traffic because I want to show you guys kind of how to be able to make a Facebook ad for any specific topic, right? Because the most important thing is when everyone's watching this video, right, they have a single website or e commerce store or service or something or affiliate marketing or whatever they're trying to actually ad advertise for. So I'm going to try to make a video here that shows you guys, you know, that doesn't teach you how to advertise for one thing, but teaches you how to advertise for anything, right? So we're going to set up the ad. Um, United States, US dollars, America, Denver, yep. And so now we are into the advert set, right? And so the advert set is where you actually create, um, you know, this is where the magic happens. This is where you can differentiate yourself um, from other marketers, right? Facebook ads are as much of an art as they are a science. I always say that there, there's so much room for, you know, being creative and using all of these different ideas in, you know, in unison with another, creating a custom audience from, you know, people who visit your order page, but not your thank you page, and then creating a lookalike audience from that custom audience. And then, you know, mirroring that lookalike audience into different countries and then, you know, split testing based on demographics of age and gender and interest. And, you know, the, the possibilities are endless, you guys. And Facebook gives you so much power to create really just amazing campaigns. So you just have to get creative and you have to learn from the right person and hopefully that's me. So the advert set name. So we're going to name this something specific as well. So we're going to call this, um, you know, micro pig apparel um, audience insights. And so audience insights is a very, um, you know, and if this was a real campaign, I'd probably have more to actually name it. Um, but you know, I'm just going to do this one from scratch. I really honestly have no idea if it's even going to work. Um, but the point of doing it this way is that I'm going to try to show you guys that you can create an audience from literally anything. It does not matter if it's, you know, digital marketing or something super popular or if it's something as boutique as a micro pig. All right. So this is where we this is where we actually do our audience, right? So if we if we're going to do a custom audience, we would have already made one in the audience section right here. 
Um, if we just come up to this menu, audiences, that's how we get here. And then we can create one either custom or lookalike. And so then once we're actually into the ad set targeting, which is where we are now, we can choose one of these custom audiences, right? So all, I've made all of these different audiences of people, you know, in Canada, in Australia, you know, all of my customers, people who visited the order, or order form but not the thank you page, engaged with my page in the last 45 days, watched 10 seconds of any video, visited the site in the last 60, 30, right? Offline conversions, which we will talk about later. Offline conversions are incredibly important, guys, because once you start to have, you know, people who are making purchases or, you know, getting kind of to the final stage of your life cycle, uh, in my specific case, it's people who actually purchased um, my FBA course or, you know, any number of my different Amazon ads, people who actually, you know, go through and actually purchase my products. Um, once you have that purchase list, then you can create what's called offline conversion campaigns, which is a very slick way to use Facebook's incredible amount of data to create incredibly accurate targeting of people who share you know, many data points with the people who actually purchase your product or service. Right, so for this one, we're not going to use a custom audience because um, I just wanna show you guys you know, completely from scratch um, how we're going to target these micro pigs. Um, so 18 to 65 plus, um, for this one, you know, how we actually get this type of data, um, cause you don't want to just completely guess, right? You want to know, you know, of everyone on Facebook, what gender and age groups and, you know, everything we can figure out about them actually like micro pigs. So how we're going to do that is we're going to come over to the audience insights section. Right, so Audience Insights is an incredibly powerful tool for Facebook ads. You know, even if you're not advertising on Facebook, it's an incredibly powerful tool of seeing people's interests and demographics and all types of different information about basically anything in the world. So we're gonna choose everyone on Facebook here. Um, and let's talk about a few things of what we're actually looking at. So right now we chose everyone on Facebook. So this means that every single person on Facebook, 54%,